So this next bit that I'm going to read is actually from towards the end of the book, and it is from the historic part of the story. This part of the story is a, built around a girl named Anne Putnam, and Anne Putnam was a real person. Anne Putnam was one of the afflicted girls at Salem who was an accuser of women as witches during the Salem Witch Crisis. And Anne Putnam's important for three reasons. Reason number one, Anne Putnam was the most deadly accuser. She accused more people who were put to death than anybody else. Reason number two that Anne Putnam's important, she is absent from the Crucible, which is the most dominant fictional story around which most people first learn about Salem. And reason number three that Anne Putnam is important, she's the only afflicted girl who ever issued an apology. So the passage that I'm gonna read right now is from towards the end when Anne and the other afflicted girls are in court at an examination of a woman named Martha Corey. And what's said in the course of this reading is actually based on what was really said in the courtroom at that time. Abby, sensing her moment, points a vibrating finger at the woman weeping before us, a few threads of gray hair now hanging loose about her shoulders. She had covenanted with the devil for 10 years. She told me six of them were gone, but there's still four to come. Judge Hawthorne exchanges a purposeful look with the other magistrates who flank him at the bench. All right, let's, let me ask you this, good wife Corey. How many persons be there in the Godhead? It's a catechism question, one we can all answer without so much as a thought, but goody Corey has been reduced to tears and sniveling and stands propping herself at the bar alone, shaking her head and saying, it cannot be, it cannot be, I? But how could I? I never did, I never would. I'm a gospel woman, I love Jesus. Her speech devolves into gasping and muttering and the blood oozes down her cheek. She's answering but oddly, one of the magistrates whispers to Judge Hawthorne, who frowns with his woolly brows knotted together. Goody Corey, Judge Hawthorne bellows, and she rolls her eyes at him like a hunted animal. Do you deny these charges being made against you? Do you mean to say that you're not a witch? She sputters, no, no, not I, never I. She chokes back her sobs, and the audience gathered in the meeting house blusters with tension, one voice after another raised against her. The magistrates lean their periwigged heads together while the assembly murmurs among themselves. I spy Abby out of the corner of my eye and she's wearing a hungry smile. Goody Pope is laughing, her eyes bright. I feel what they're feeling, the intoxicating sense that the squirming wretch who used to scorn us now twists at our mercy. These men with their self-important robes and beefy faces all hearken to us, acting at our will. I gaze on the weakened form of Goody Corey, a woman who used to think that she could order me about, could box my ears whenever she felt like it, and as the tears begin to stream down her face, I draw myself up to my full height, and I smile. 